This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Standing by on the McClarty Daniel hotline is Big Trail Nation's Alyssa Orange, who was gracious enough to do today instead of yesterday because we had three Arkansas football players join us in the second hour <laughs> yesterday, Alyssa. We had a lot of fun talking with Landon Jackson and K.J. Jefferson, yeah. Rocket Sanders. They're no Alyssa yeah. Orange, but they were they were. Hey, I know my place, though. They can jump ahead of me. It's cool. Well, it was, <laughs> it was enjoyable talking to them, you know, and uh, – yeah. There was there there was there was good stuff from uh, from all of them. I think you know when I hear about Rocket, he's talking about probably going to catch a few more passes, might line up a little bit more often outside. KJ, mm -hmm. uh, you know, worked on accuracy. Um, he expects to be throwing more, running less. Landon Jackson put on forty pounds of muscle. You yeah. only hear the good stuff during SEC media right. days. Yeah, well, you know, first and foremost, you know, it doesn't surprise me they want to get Rocket into that passing game. Sometimes it's easy to forget. He came in as a wide receiver recruit at high school. Uh, so he has those skills. And I think KJ really is just trying to make himself a much more well-rounded quarterback as he looks towards the NFL and how he can build that with Dan Enos. And then truthfully, Phil, we talked to Landon Jackson maybe once or twice. And so listening to him and all of his media outings, just really impressed. He seems like a guy that we're going to talk to more often, and I'm looking forward to getting to know him a little bit better. Love his energy. Got an infectious smile. think he's going to be a great guy that we're going to be able to talk to throughout the season. Um, but, yeah, you're right. A lot of positives out of this Arkansas uh, team, and I think that that's good to see that things are going well in their eyes as they portray it. KJ talked about how him and Rocket are working on their communication, and that's kind of bolstered their relationship a little bit. But I will say in Sam's opening press conference, he was very introspective, and we've always seen that from Sam Pittman. He said, look, we've got a lot to fix. Things aren't perfect. I'm not going for it on fourth down as much. And some of those people who are listening laughed, but he was being serious, really looking at what do I need to see more in practice as a head coach before I put things in games, making smarter decisions, looking at the analytics more than he ever has as a coach, what he has to improve on to be a better head coach for Arkansas. And he said all of those things in his opening statement on the main stage. And so, yes, it's going to be a lot of positive stuff. That's warranted. K.J. Jefferson and the hype that he's getting – Rocket Sanders and KJ being one of the best running back quarterback duos in the country. But Sam kept it real at the beginning of, look, we, we still have work to do. Well, and you want to, Alyssa, you want to get the best 11 on the field. I, I love it. If Rocket Sanders and then you can put A.J. Green and Rocket Sanders in the backfield at the same time, you can, Danny knows, likes to use motion. You mo motion Rocket Sanders out, get a mismatch. You you think of him running a, a route on a linebacker or the team's third D-back. I mean, he should be able, those should be winning situations. Absolutely. And, and that's what I think we're going to see with Rocket Sanders for sure, to take that game of his to the next level. We don't expect him to come back for his senior year. So this kind of is his year to show Arkansas what he can do, have a really good college career and a finish to it because we expect him to go into the NFL draft next year and then also just show how versatile he can be to those NFL scouts who are keeping a big eye on him. But he has just got so many tools that you can use. I don't know why you wouldn't utilize all of those. And I love A.J. Green. I wanted to see more of him a year ago. But it's tough in that running back room because you also have uh, Rashad Dubinion back there and, and Dominique Johnson, whatever his role is going to look like. Maybe it kind of adapts more to a fullback role for him. But there's so many options for Jimmy Smith in that backfield that I'm really excited to see how him and Danny Nos can get creative with it. I love hearing and watching Coach Pittman speak in front of media and and I love when he I love when he's on the radio show and everything that he does yeah. during the football season and he just is he he comes off as somebody who isn't fake at all uh some mm -hmm. of the coaches come off as salesmen and it's okay because that's what you're doing when you're speaking in front of them but I don't know I mean I I buy what coach Pittman is selling just because there's an air of of um of, of being genuine uh, about him. Mm -hmm. I think the media feels the same way. Like, there's a fear of Nick Saban. Um, I don't you know if they feel that way about Kirby Smart yet, but there's a fear of Nick Saban. Just don't ask a stupid question or a question he thinks mm -hmm. is stupid. 
Sam Pittman mm-hmm. might make fun of you a little bit. The whole thing with Ham's beer yesterday. You know, <laughs> yes. It was that a question? Up. Yeah, it wasn't even a question very much, but he told the guy to step up his game. Like, there's humor in, in that. Yeah. It didn't make the guy necessarily yeah. feel stupid. He might be, right. truthfully, and this has nothing to do with how the season portrays or anything, I think he might be the most liked head coach in the league. I think so. You know, he got asked that question, are you the new Mike Leach? Because you're just kind of, you know, that fun-loving guy everybody loves to talk to. And he jokingly said, there's no way I could fill those shoes. But you're right, because just Sam's just real. You know, because then he goes and he talks about, you know, what he's listening to on Spotify and those playlists. And then he, you know, he even opens up talking about being a part of the athletic department and giving props to track and field and basketball and baseball and softball and talking about, um, the fountain at the hog, you know, on, on Lake Hamilton. And he's just a real guy who is cool with talking about some of those things. And look, I have been a victim of Nick Saban making me feel stupid for a question that I asked at my very first media day. And it was a valid question in my defense because he goes, I never said that. And then went on to talk about why he was in agreement with what I said. It was very strange, but I understand how intimidating it can be to talk to Nick Saban from experience and Sam just doesn't give off that vibe. So even if you do have a quote unquote stupid question, Sam isn't really going to make you feel that stupid for asking it. I wonder where this team's going to be picked. The poll comes out tomorrow yep. and Arkansas very well may have the first team SEC quarterback, the first team SEC running back, uh, and mm-hmm. still or probably I think they're going to be picked fifth. In, in the West. Yeah. And I'm not making my season predictions or anything. I'm not going to do that. I just, this is how I think the rest of the media will view Arkansas. That the race in the, in the West is amongst Alabama, LSU, and A&M, maybe in that order, and then Ole Miss, and then probably Arkansas. Yeah, I think they're in that three to five range as well. And we've kind of had a poll on our sportscast all week, and that's where most of the people have voted in that three to five range. And I think they're going to be fourth if I have to put them right back in the middle of that range. Uh, I, I can see where maybe the votes come out that way, like you said, or maybe it's Alabama, LSU, Ole Miss, Arkansas, then A&M. A&M is just so weird because they recruit so well and they have so much talent, but yet they find a way to screw it up. So I just I'm, I don't like putting a lot of faith in them to actually have a successful season because we haven't seen it happen yet. Uh, but I think you're absolutely right. They're going to be right there in the middle of the pack of the SEC West with two guys who have a really good argument this preseason on why they can put Heisman campaigns together in 2023. Alyssa, what what music? What's on a, the Alyssa Orange jukebox right now? We were just talking a little bit about what was on yeah. uh, Coach Pittman's. What, what are you listening to these days? <laughs> Great. So, well, so uh, I have a rotation. If you open up my Spotify, I've got like my top six things. So Matchbox 20's new album, to, uh, Where the Light Goes, is one of my favorites right now. Been listening to a lot of Hosier, a big fan of him. Um, the Jonas Brothers new album's on there too. I kind of like, it's kind of my fun. Want to get uh, hype in the car and just kind of have like fun that I put that on. And then uh, Leon Bridges is, is up there as well. So between those four and some Maggie Rogers, I, re- I rotate between those right now. Any, any list with Rob Thomas on it is a good list. Oh, my gosh. I love him. I fangirled so hard when they were here at the Amp a few weeks ago. It was fantastic. That song with Carlos Santana speaking of birthdays today. It's oh. Carlos Santana's Ooh. birthday. Never yeah, that's, that's I have no idea what song you're there. talking about. They never played that one on the radio eight never. times an hour. <laughs> <laughs> they never did that. Um, but I've got on my uh, and I I use Apple Music. I don't do Spotify. But my kids had control of it in our uh, convertible uh, in Chicago over the weekend. We had a lot of Michael yeah. Jackson. We had Wham, the go. Blues Brothers. Okay. I'm the one who chose the Blues Brothers. So I was like, you got it. Yeah. If you're driving around in Chicago, it's got to be Blues Brothers. Yeah. Um, yeah, right. that's awesome. You know who's up in, you know, the Nickelback is at the Amp tonight. Would you Who? guys go to Nickelback? I mean, maybe Jimmy Butler. Maybe that's so, Jimmy maybe Butler. somebody else bought the ticket. Do you hear where Jimmy yeah, Butler plays it for his teammates? <laughs> <laughs> he does that as a joke, doesn't he? You have to I do think that. He's in, there's a, I think he might be into him. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> he, he's dating Shakira now, so he's in, he knows the pop world. Nobody's going to be at, nobody's going to be asking about playlists once uh, once camp starts. You know, no. I mean that that's when like media days are great because it's like it's mm-hmm. the start of camp and then there's two weeks before camp. 
But now, once camp starts, we finally get to hear from more players and, and the assistant coaches for the only time. Like, August is so important to f- yeah. be able to talk with the assistant coaches, which you never get mm-hmm. to do. So, I mean, what's top yeah. of mind once camp starts? What do you want to know? Right. Well, I think we all want to talk to the secondary coach, right? We want to talk to Marcus Woodson. We want to talk to Travis Williams. We want to talk to those guys about what this defense looks like, how these changes, you know, are going to go, and how aggressive is Travis Williams going to be. It's those kind of questions. Who are you plugging in around Chris Paul? Like, that's what people want to know. And then people probably want to talk about – you know, Jimmy Jimmy Smith, I think Jimmy Smith would be someone to be so fascinating to sit down and talk with and just kind of see exactly how he navigates that running back room that he has. Um, because it's been really impressive what they've been able to do since he's gotten here. But that's when we get to talk to him because we won't get to talk to him the rest of the season, like ever. And so write your questions down now because you get one shot. I want, to Jimmy, I want to know Jimmy Smith's secret sauce in recruiting because he is uh, he is uh, he has been killing it as far as bringing in good running backs. Um, exactly. Alyssa, we'll leave it there. Appreciate you hopping okay. on a day later. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll do it again next week. Okay. Always, guys. Have a good one. We'll talk next week. Thanks, Alyssa. Alyssa Orange. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.